Hi there, welcome. Coach Chris Wilson here in the Critical Bench office, and I wanted to cover one of my favorite reads of the year. Uh, it's a book by the name of Hero by Meg Meager, and I was blown away by the information in this book. Uh, I liked it so much I would go back and reread certain parts of it and certain chapters because I just found it so powerful. And I think for anybody, um, whether you're a parent or not, I mean, I think for parents, you're going to get a bit more out of this. But really, it's about being a hero uh, in other people's lives. Um, and this book really is kind of going after, uh, you know, dads uh, and in particular being the, the, the rock in their family. So this is really hit home with me. So I wanted to cover my big takeaways from this book with you. I have four of them and uh, I'll just start with what my first one was. Uh, what I do so that you know when I read a book I write a, a, a short review about the book which is fantastic so that you know down the road if I ever want to look back at my own notes uh, it kind of helps bring the book back to life for me. It's like my own personal cliff notes. So number one, my take, first takeaway was that society has conditioned us men, dads, fathers, to think that we aren't important or as important as we once were, that we're not cool anymore. You know, if you watch a lot of television, if you watch a lot of sitcoms, uh, stuff like that, always kind of shows the dad as a bit of a stumbling, bumbling moron. Uh, <laughs> and it's, it's unfortunate. And I think it's pretty far off the mark. Um, I love how the author, Meg Meeker, by the way, she is a uh, pediatrician for decades and a, a very uh, popular author. So definitely look her up uh, if you're looking for a, a great read as a, as a parent. Um, I love how she speaks directly to the dads out there throughout the book. And she mentioned, yes, I have cheater notes here. She mentions how that... Uh, that dads under the power of, of God can never be overlooked or discarded. Uh, that we are the tough ones, we're the ones that have to carry the burdens, uh, do the things that, that others aren't willing to do in order to keep our family together, to keep them safe, uh, to help them feel protected. Um, I love how she talks about uh, the power of the word father that even God himself refers to himself as our father and how special that title is. Um, it, it was just a, a theme that ran throughout the book and I, I found it really interesting coming actually from the voice of a woman speaking to men in particular um, about just how important our role is in, in the family unit. Uh, number two, a big takeaway for me was that I am not my dad. I'm not my father. Now, <clears throat> this, there's, I guess, two ways to look at this, right? If you had a phenomenal upbringing, if you absolutely adored your father and thought he was, you know, you know just the best dad ever, then you're going to emulate that or you're going to want to. You're going to want to be that type of role model, that type of leader, mentor, uh, or guide for your children. But some of us uh, have a more challenging childhood, maybe don't have a strong relationship with our father, feel that there was a lot of um, things that could have been done differently or better. And so I wrote, uh, regardless of your upbringing, good or bad, we are not our dads. Uh, if we had an amazing dad, then great. Model that and try like hell to be the amazing dad you had. If you didn't have a great dad, we know what's, what's good is you know what not to do and you have the power to give your child the father that you always wanted when you were a child. So just even growing up maybe through a difficult childhood, you know what you wouldn't want uh, as, as a child when it comes to a parent. So be that, fill that void that you had for your child. I thought that was pretty amazing. And then I, I went on to write, every day we have an opportunity to do better, to try harder, to show we care, to give them a hug, make eye contact and listen better. I mean, how, how I know that's where I fail sometimes. You come home from work and you're still not kind of completely 
detached from work, you're still checking on your phone for may maybe that email that you were waiting to get back or something, and you just have to drop everything you're doing and just realize you have to give them your full attention and not be distracted. Um, my wife reminds me that <laughs> uh, it's up to us to decide to give it everything we have to be the ultimate leaders for our kids and not just their coach in life. Coaches are, are great and I actually coach my, my son's Little League Baseball team and I, I absolutely love doing it but coaches are role models and, and are leaders and mentors but they're not a parent. There's nothing that can replace a parent to a child so be committed and be uh, all in for your kid and that really leads into my third takeaway which was be there. Um, above, all, above all else just show up. Don't run away. Don't give up on your family or your children, even when they tell us they hate us, right? Because I know even as young as my children are, they have their moments, they have their days where they're just not having a good, a good day and they really make you kind of feel bad <laughs> as a parent and you just have to let them kind of go through that. We all have bad days, right? And we all say things to people we love that we don't mean. So you got to realize that, that you still just have to be a rock for them. Uh, so they need us so badly, I wrote. Without us in their lives, they will have a hole that can never be filled. As long as we are a presence in their lives, we have the authority and power through God to positively affect the direction of their life. We must fight to never lose our connection to our children, even as they grow older. They will always need me I wrote, to be there for them. They will always need you to be there for them, even as they grow older. Number four, my last big takeaway was <clears throat> something that can sometimes get me a bit extra emotional. <laughs> uh, I wrote, love and tenacity. And then in the book, there was, uh, they, Meg showcased a relationship between a father and a dad. You may be familiar with it or not. Um, and I'll get to that in just a second. So I wrote, the relationship I have with my kids is great as far as I feel. Um, in my opinion, I have a great relationship with my children and I hope it continues. I hope it gets even better. I'd like to think though that it could be as great as Dick Hoyt and his son Rick. Um, so this story really hit me, as did a lot of the amazing stories Meg cites in the book, but the father-son relationship between Dick and his son Rick is unlike anything else I've ever heard in my life. Having a son, so this, this son Rick was said to be a vegetable at, at birth as a, as a baby who, and he eventually becomes a college graduate from Boston University. It was his father's love and tenacity and of course mom's too uh, that led him to having a chance at life. And then I went on to write, Dick never gave up on his son. He loved him with everything he had, and he never stopped regardless of what others said. He showed his son how big his love was, and that no matter what, he wouldn't leave his side. And then I wrote, it reminds me of someone else we hold in high regard. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> um, he also uh, famously said that this, this uh, father, uh, Rick, a uh, dick, sorry, he said, no man has ever been closer to his son than he is with Rick. And... I'll just share with you very briefly, it's, they're known, known as Team Hoyt and they're actually quite popular. I think you could look them up pretty quickly and find out some information. So this, this uh, Mr. Uh, Hoyt took his son, uh, Rick, who had these, these issues on runs, marathons and Ironmans and all kinds of these events. He brought him, his son with him and pulled him, pushed him, carried him, did whatever he could to include his son in everything he did, physic this physical stuff, and this connection that, that they created between the two of them is just as powerful as any relationship there ever has been, right? And through all this love and nurturing and, and, and just this fight to show how much these parents love their child, this, this child actually um, came out of this state of mind and ended up getting a college degree. 
and had a life because of this love. And then I wrote, um, I just hope my son feels that loved by me. And it gets me emotional just thinking about this dad pushing, pulling, and carrying his son in all these triathlons, Ironmans, and marathons, and how powerful that is. So look up Team Hoyt, and I'm sure you'll be pleasantly surprised by what you find. I went on to write, of course that situation is an extreme case, but it's that never-ending love <clears throat> and persistence by a father that helps build a child's character and self-worth. It is our responsibility as parents to show them, through God, how big our love is and that it's limitless. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I think that's our legacy as parents. And then uh, <clears throat> I went on to write at the, at the end of my big takeaways, an action item. I always like to write something like after my takeaways, like what am I going to do? How am I going to change something in my, in my day-to-day, in my habits? How, how am I going to use some of this great information from this book and apply it to my life? So I wrote, get involved, be present, show you care every day. When talking to your kids, look them in the eyes. Don't be distracted by other things. Give them your full attention. Remember, you're not their friend. You're their father or you're their mother. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to do your best every day to show them how much you love them, how much you believe in them, that you will always support them in good times and bad, and you'll always be a rock when they need you to be one. And uh, <clears throat> that's everything I had on that. So I, I hope, uh, you know, like I said, it, it gets me a, a bit emotional or a bit choked up sometimes of trying to hold together. <laughs> but being a parent is a pretty awesome responsibility. For those of you who are not, get ready. It's, it's amazing. And uh, the love that you have for your child is uh, unlike any love that you'll ever have. It's just unique. And uh, I hope you enjoy that book. Again, it's Hero by Meg Meeker. Give it a try. She has lots of great books, but uh, that one really hit home. I hope you uh, enjoy that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got something out of this. And uh, be sure to check out this amazing free report.